fellow citizens on the eve of the 68th republic day of our nation i extend warm greetings to all of you in india and abroad i convey my special greetings to members of our armed forces paramilitary forces and internal security forces i pay my tribute to the brave soldiers and security personnel who made the supreme sacrifice of their lives in defending india's territorial integrity and maintaining law and order when india attained freedom on 15th august 1947 we did not have an instrument of governance of our own we waited till 26th january 1950 when the indian people gave to themselves a constitution to secure for all its citizens justice liberty equality and gender and economic equity we promised to promote fraternity dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation on that day we became the largest democracy of the world the faith and commitment of people gave life to our constitution and our founding fathers wisely and carefully steered the new nation past its troubles of being a poor economy with huge regional imbalances and a vast citizenry deprived of even basic necessities it goes to the credit of the strong institutions of democracy built by our founders that for the last six and a half decades indian democracy has been an oasis of stability in the regional the region troubled by unrest from a population of 360 million in 1951 we are now a 1.3 billion strong nation even then our per capita income has shown a tenfold increase poverty ratio has declined by two thirds average life expectancy has more than doubled and literacy rate has shown a fourfold increase we are today the fastest growing amongst the major economies of the world we are the second largest reservoir of scientific and technical manpower the third largest army the sixth member of the nuclear club the sixth member in the race for space and the 10th largest industrial power from a net food grains importing country india is now a leading exporter of food commodities the journey so far has been eventful sometimes painful but most of the times exhilarating what has brought us thus far will take us further ahead but we will have to learn to adjust our sails quickly and deftly to the winds of change evolutionary and incremental growth will have to accommodate rapid disruptions brought in by advances of science and technology innovation more so inclusive innovation will have to become a way of life education will have to keep pace with technology in the race between man and machine the winner will have to be job generation the velocity of technology adoption will call for a workforce that is willing to learn and adapt our education system will have to join hands with innovation to prepare our youth for lifelong learning our economy has been performing well despite the challenging global economic conditions in the first half of 2016-17 it grew at a rate of 7.2% same as that last year showing sustained recovery we are firmly on the path of fiscal consolidation and our inflation level is within comfort zone though our exports are yet to pick up we have managed a stable external sector with sizable foreign exchange reserves demonetization while immobilizing black money and fighting corruption may have led to temporary sl- uh, slowdown of economic activity as more and more transactions become cashless it will improve the transparency of the economy born in independent india three generations of citizens do not carry the baggage of colonial past these generations have had the privilege of acquiring education pursuing opportunities and chasing dreams in a free nation this sometimes make it easy for them to take freedom for granted to forget the price that extraordinary men and women paid to win this freedom to forget that the tree of freedom needs constant care and nourishment democracy has conferred rights on each one of us but along with these rights come responsibilities which have to be discharged gandhi ji said and i quote 
द हाइएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ फ्रीडम कैरी इज विद इट द ग्रेटेस्ट मेजर ऑफ डिसिप्लिन एंड ह्यूमिलिटी फ्रीडम दैट कम्स फ्रॉम डिसिप्लिन एंड ह्यूमिलिटी कैन नॉट बी डिनाइड अनब्राइडल्ड लाइसेंस इज अ साइन ऑफ वलगैरिटी इंजूरियस ए लाइक टू सेल्फ एंड अदर्स यूथ टूडे आर ब्रिमिंग विद होप एंड एस्पिरेशन दे परसीव देयर लाइफ गोल्स विच दे परसीव विल ब्रिंग दम फेम सक्सेस एंड हैप्पीनेस विथ सिंगल माइंडेड डिवोशन they consider happiness as their existential objective which of course is understandable they search for happiness in the highs and lows of day to day emotions and in the fulfillment of the objectives they have set for themselves they look for a job as well as a purpose in life lack of opportunities leads to frustration and unhappiness which manifests itself in anger anxiety stress and aberrations in behavior this has to be dealt with by inculcating pro social behavior through gainful employment active engagement with community parental guidance and empathetic response from a caring society one of my predecessors left on my table a fa- framed quotation which i quote the object of government in peace and in war is not the glory of rulers or races but the happiness of the common man happiness is fundamental to the human experience of life happiness is equally the outcome of economic and non economic parameters the quest for happiness is closely tied to sustainable development which combines human well being social inclusion and environmental sustainability we must make happiness and well being of our people as the touch stones of public policy Many of the flagship initiatives of the government have been designed to promote the well-being of the society. The Swachh Bharat Mission aims at a clean India by 2nd October 2019 to coincide with the 150th birth anniversary of Gandhi ji. Increased spending on programs like Manrega is enhancing employment generation to rejuvenate the rural economy. Aadhaar with its present reach of over 110 crore people is helping in direct transfer of benefits plugging leakages and improving transparency the digital india program is creating a knowledge economy through universal provision of digital infrastructure and platforms for cashless economic transactions initiatives like startup india and atal innovation mission are fostering innovation and new age entrepreneurship under the skill india initiative the national skill development mission is working on skiing 300 million youth by 2022 it is my firm conviction that india's pluralism and her social cultural linguistic and religious diversity are our greatest strength our tradition has always celebrated the argumentative indian not the intolerant indian multiple views thoughts and philosophies have complete competed with each other peacefully for centuries in our country a wise and discerning mind is necessary for democracy to flourish more than the unison of ideas a healthy democracy calls for conformity to the values of tolerance patience and respect for others these values must reside in the hearts and minds of every indian inculcating in them a temperament of understanding and responsibility we have a noisy democracy yet we need more and not less of democracy the strength of our democracy is evidenced by the fact that over 66% of the total electorate of 834 million voted in the 2014 general elections the depth and breadth of our democracy sparkles in the regular elections being held in our panchayati raj institutions and yet our legislatures lose sessions to disruptions when they should be debating and legislating on issues of importance collective efforts must be made to bring the focus back to debate discussion and decision making as our republic enters her 68th year we must acknowledge that our systems are not perfect the imperfections have to be recognized and rectified the settled complacencies have to be questioned the edifice of trust has to be strengthened the time is also ripe for a constructive debate on electoral reforms and a return to the practice of the early decades after independence when elections to lok sabha and state assemblies were held simultaneously it is for the election commission to take this exercise forward in consultation with political parties 
In a fiercely competitive world, we have to work harder than ever to redeem the promises that we make to our people. We have to work harder because our war on poverty is not over yet over. Our economy is yet to grow at over 10% for an extended period of time to make a significant dent on poverty. One-fifth of our countrymen still remain below poverty line.